Welcome to Fort Bend Tutoring. Today we will be teaching you on a new subject of which you might find interesting. Please put your cigarette down and pay attention for a minute. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is going to be about solving logarithmic equations. So let's take a look at that. Before we begin with the problems, I want to point out that knowing how to convert between logarithmic notation and exponential notation is going to help you out tremendously. So anytime you have a logarithmic equation in the form of log b of x equals to y, you can convert that into exponential notation by writing your base b raised to that value of y equals to x and you can go back and forth between these two different notations the exponential notation as well as the logarithmic notation so be aware of that conversion when you're working out these problems in addition to that there are many different log properties out there that we'll be using in these problems here so make sure that you're up on all of the logarithmic properties as I point them out to you alright so let's check out some problems ladies and gentlemen problem number one is coming up for the first four problems, I'm going to show you two different ways to go about solving these logarithmic equations. And then after that, I'll just solve them by the method that calls out to me the most. All right. So in problem number one, we have x equals to 3 raised to the log base 3 of 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and convert this into logarithmic form. It's currently in exponential form. So in logarithmic form, it would look like so. I would have log with a base 3 of x equals to the exponent which is log 3 of 4. Anytime I have an equation where the same logarithm is on either side of the equal sign you can go ahead and cancel that out. That leaves us with x equals to 4 which is the answer to this problem ladies and gentlemen. That's it. That's problem number one. Another way to approach this is to do the following. In this second method, anytime my larger base is equivalent to the base of my logarithm, what ends up happening is those will cancel out to leave me that value as the answer, which means that x is equivalent to 4, and that's it. This 3 and the logarithm with a base of 3, they cancel out to give me a result of 4, and that's it. So either way, you'll end up with x equals to 4, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. That's it. That's all there is to it. So let's look at problem number two. In problem number two, converting this logarithmic form into exponential form, I'll have it written as x raised to the second power equals to 25. That being the case, ladies and gentlemen, you could then take the square root of both sides, and we won't have to worry about the negative version of the square root of 25 because you can never take the log of a negative value. All right, so you don't have to worry about that. So going forward, you'll end up with simply x equals to 5. And that's it. That's the answer. Done and done. Another way to solve problem number 2 is to exponentialize the equation. Meaning that I'm going to take the base here and make both sides of my equation exponents. It'll look just like this. I'll have it rewritten as x to the log x of 25 equals to x to the second power. So therefore I took the base of x and made that my common base and raised everything else as exponents. From there this x and log x will cancel out as it did in our previous problem and that'll leave me with 25 equals to x squared. From there you can go ahead and take the square root of both sides and the square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of x squared is x so once again x equals to 5 and that's my answer alright let's move on to the next problem ladies and gentlemen in problem number three changing this into exponential notation you always want to note that if you don't see a base here ladies and gentlemen you can assume that the base is 10 so this is the same thing as log base 10 of 1 hundredths equals to x so changing this into exponential notation this will be 10 to the x equals to 1 hundredths we can then convert this 1 hundredths as a base of 10 for instance, this is 10 to the x equals to 1 hundredths is 1 over 100, which is the same thing as 1 over 10 squared. So I can rewrite this as 10 to the x equals to 10 to the negative 2 power. 
Once my bases are identical on either side of the equal sign, those bases will cancel out to leave me with a result of x equals to negative 2, which is my answer. Done and done. All right? Another way of going about doing this, ladies and gentlemen, is, as I did in the previous problem, exponentialize it. So I know that my base here is 10, so I can say 10 to the log base 10 of 1 hundredths equals to 10 to the x. What happens next is I'll end up with those 10 and that log 10 canceling out, and I'll be bringing down this 1 hundredths, which equals to 10 to the x. From there, I'll show that 1 hundredths is the same thing as 10 to the negative 2 power. So once again, I'll have 10 to the negative 2 power equals to 10 to the x, and my 10s will cancel out so that x equals to negative 2 and done. All right. So admittedly, ladies and gentlemen, it seems like the first method was the fastest way to solve that one for problem number three. All right. Just saying. Next problem, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so in problem number four, I have the following. I have x equals to log with a base of four-fifths of 25 sixteenths. I can have four-fifths raised to the x equals to 25 sixteenths. From here, ladies and gentlemen, I can see that I have four-fifths raised to the x equals to, on the right side, I can show that I have five squared over four squared. But what I really need is to have this base of 5 in the denominator and the base of 4 in the numerator. So in doing so, you'll have to change the sign on your exponents. So this becomes 4 to the negative 2 power over 5 to the negative 2 power. Then, rewriting this as 4 fifths to the x, this equals to the quantity of 4 fifths raised to the negative 2 power. What happens from there is that my 4 fifths will cancel out and x equals to negative 2 once again. All right, so there you have it. Using the method of exponentializing the problem, I'll have a base of 4 fifths that I'll be using on either side of the equal sign. So I'll have 4 fifths raised to the x equals to 4 fifths raised to the log 4 fifths of 25 sixteenths. From this point, ladies and gentlemen, all of this here will cancel out. That 4 fifths raised to the log 4 fifths will cancel out. And I'll have 4 fifths to the x equals to this 25 sixteenths, which we know from the previous problem is equivalent to 4 fifths raised to the negative 2 power. So once again, these 4 fifths will cancel out and x equals to negative 2, and that's going to be my result there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep it moving. From this point on, I'm just going to go ahead and just use one method to solve these problems, so let's see how that works out. In problem number 5, I have 2x minus 1 equals to log 6 of 6 to the x power. Anytime this log matches this base, ladies and gentlemen, it cancels out just like that. So I'll rewrite this as 2x minus 1 equals to x. From this point here, I'm going to just solve for x by subtracting 2x to both sides. And from here, I'll end up with negative 1 equals to negative x. And then I'll be dividing both sides by negative 1. So x equals to 1, and that's the answer, ladies and gentlemen. Done. All right. So starting out, once again, we were using one of our logarithmic properties that any time our base matches that larger base there, it's going to cancel out every single time to leave you this exponent here. So I bring down that value of x, have it set equal to the 2x minus 1, and then I solve for x by subtracting 2x to both sides and dividing both sides by negative 1. We end up with x equals to 1 and done. That's the result there. That's problem number 5, ladies and gentlemen. Moving along, we have our next problem. In problem number six, we have log with a base of five of eight minus three x equals to three. So what I'll do here, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm gonna choose to convert this into exponential notation. So I can show that this is the same as five to the third power equals to eight minus three x, just like so. Once I have it written this way, I can find out that five to the third power is actually 125, which equals to eight minus three x. Then, solving for x, I'll be subtracting 8 to both sides. 
This gives me 117 equals to negative 3x. And then I'll be dividing both sides by negative 3. Simplifying this, we have x equals to negative 39. Now, ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind that you can have extraneous solutions in these problems. So you need to always guarantee that whatever your log is, that you're always taking the log of a positive value. So anytime the quantity here equals to 0 or a negative value, it will be undefined. You won't be able to use that value. That value will be extraneous. It will be an extraneous solution. So if I were to plug in negative 39 back back into this original quantity, it'll end up becoming a positive value, so that means it'll be okay. So I don't have to worry about that solution. That solution works out just fine. So x equals to negative 39. So keep in mind that when you're doing logarithms, the domain of a logarithm can never be zero or a negative value. So keep that in mind when you're checking your solutions. That's problem number six, ladies and gentlemen. Let's keep moving on. For problem number seven, I have log with a base of three of the quantity x plus 5 times x minus 3, which equals to 2. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and change this into exponential notation. So that means that this is going to become 3 squared, which equals to x plus 5 times x minus 3. Multiplying this out and evaluating this 3 squared, it becomes 9 equals to x squared plus 2x minus 15. So that's after I full out that right side there. The next thing I'll do is set this equal to 0 by subtracting 9 of both sides. So I'll now have x squared plus 2x minus 24 equals to 0. Now it just so turns out that this trinomial is factorable. So two factors of 24 that I'll subtract to give me 2 is going to be 6 and 4. So I can factor this out to give me x plus 6 times x minus 4 equal to 0. Setting each factor equal to 0, you'll have the results x equals to negative 6 as well as x equals to 4. Your solutions can be extraneous because I won't be able to take the log of a negative value. So let's see what happens when we plug in negative 6. Plugging in negative 6, you'll end up with negative 1 from this first set of parentheses, and you'll end up with negative 9 from this second set of parentheses. So that being the case, you'll end up with a positive value in here. It'll become a positive 9 inside, and that'll be fine. Plugging in your other value, which was positive 4, let's see what happens with that. You'll have 4 plus 5, which is 9, and you also have 4 minus 3, which is 1, and 1 times 9 is positive 9. So that means that both of these solutions will work in your original problem, ladies and gentlemen. You have two solutions for problem number 7. So as a solution set, it'll be negative 6, 4. Done and done. All right, that was problem example seven, ladies and gentlemen. You always have to check for your extraneous solutions just to make sure that they all work in the original problem. In problem number eight, I have log x plus log of 2x plus 1 equals to 1. Remember that since my base is not shown, I know that I'm in base 10 here. So what I can do is that since I have addition with this same logarithm, I can change this into multiplication. I can change the logarithm into a product. So it becomes log of x times 2x plus 1 equals to 1. From there, I'm going to exponentialize this equation. So my base is 10, so I'll have 10 to the log of x times 2x plus 1, which equals to 10 to the first power. That being the case, this log and the 10 will cancel out. Remember that since this base is not shown, that base is 10. So it will cancel out with that larger base. Then I'll bring down x times 2x plus 1, which equals to 10 to the first power, which is 10. I'll then distribute. I got my arrows popping here. So I'll have 2x squared plus x equals to 10. And then I'll set this equation equal to 0. From there, I'll have 2x squared plus x minus 10 equals to 0. Using the AC method, I have 2 times 10, which is 20, and 2 factors of 10 that will subtract to give me 1, or 5 and 4. So I can factor this. This will be x plus 5 times x minus 4 equals to 0. 
Remember that if you need practice factoring a quadratic trinomial, go ahead and check out our factoring quadratic trinomials part two, because that's the method I'm about to use now. Because my next step here will be to divide both of these values by two and then simplify. So I end up with 2x plus 5 times x minus 2 equals 0 as the factored form of that equation. Setting each factor equal to 0 and solving for it, you'll have results of x equals to negative 5 halves as well as x equals to positive 2. What we want to do next is to see if either of these problems will actually be able to work in the original problem. Remember, I can't take the log of 0 or a negative value. And that's going to exclude this first example here. So I can't use, ladies and gentlemen, this negative 5 halves because right here I would be trying to take the log of a negative number. Then plugging in positive 2, positive 2 works just fine. It doesn't give me 0 or a negative value for any of these quantities I'll be trying to take the log of. That means that the only solution in this problem is going to be x equals to 2. And that's it, all right? So the x equals to negative 5 halves, that was an extraneous solution, ladies and gentlemen. You do not include that in your result. Let's see what happens next. In our next example, we have log of x plus 6 minus log of x plus 2 equals to log of x. Because I have the same log here on the left side of the equal sign, I can combine those into a quotient. So this becomes log of x plus 6 over x plus 2 equals to log of x. Now that I have the same log on either side of the equal sign, one of each, those logs will cancel out. So I now have my equation written as x plus 6 over x plus 2 equals to x over 1. I'm going to go ahead and write it as a proportion so that I can use cross multiplication. Okay. Next, Multiplying this out, cross multiplying, I'll have x plus 6 equals to x times x plus 2. From this point, go ahead and distribute that x. Go ahead and get those arrows popping. So I'll have x plus 6 equals to x squared plus 2x. And then I'll set the equation equal to 0. Setting this equation equal to 0, I'll subtract 6 to both sides as well as the x. Everything cancels out on the left side to 0, so I'll end up with x squared plus x minus 6 equals to 0. Factoring this out, you'll have x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals to 0 to give you results of x equals to negative 3 as well as x equals to positive 2. Since I have x equals to negative 3 and x equals to 2, I need to check to see if either of these will create an undefined situation. Remember, the domain for logarithms are x has to be greater than 0. So that means that x cannot equal to negative 3 here because it will create a negative value for this quantity over here to the right, as well as this quantity here inside the parentheses. So negative 3 is not a solution that I can use. Checking out positive 2 as a potential result, I'm plugging in 2 into each of these quantities, and none of them will generate 0 or a negative value, which means that the only solution to this problem is x equals to 2, ladies and gentlemen. That's problem number 9. All right, next problem. In problem number 10, I have log base 8 of x plus log base 8 of 3x minus 13 equals to log base 8 of 10. What I'll do in this problem is recognize that anytime I have the same logarithms with an addition sign between them, I can combine them into a product. I'll rewrite this as log base 8 of x times 3x minus 13 equals to log base 8 of 10. From here, I have this same log on either side of the equal sign, which means that I can cancel that out. Rewriting this, ladies and gentlemen, this becomes 3x squared minus 13x equals to 10. Once I have this, I'll set this equal to 0 by subtracting 10 to both sides. So that reads as 3x squared minus 13x minus 10 equals to 0. Here, I'll be trying to factor this out. So 3 times 10 gives me 30, and there are two factors of 30 that will subtract to give me 13. Those two factors are 15 and 2. So I'll rewrite this as x minus 15 times x plus 2 
equals a zero, and I'll go back in and divide both the 15 and the two by that co first coefficient, which is three. Simplifying this, I'll have x minus five times three x plus two, which equals a zero. Once you set both of these factors equal to zero and solve for x, you'll end up with x equals to five, as well as x equals to negative two-thirds. So the question becomes, are any of these solutions extraneous, meaning can they work in the original problem? So starting out with the positive five, this positive five does not violate the domain. I won't be taking the log of a negative value or zero. So five works out just fine. Negative two-thirds is extraneous because it creates a negative value when plugged into this first value of x. So therefore, I can't use it. My only solution here, ladies and gentlemen, is positive five. That's it. And that's problem number 10, ladies and gentlemen. So thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and that was solving logarithmic equations with Fort Bend Tutoring. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and if you're able, please donate. Peace. We appreciate your time. Don't you want to learn mathematics the correct way? You need a foundation. Do not just be guessing at your numbers. Contact us today. Look us up on your Facebook at Fort Bend Tutoring. Learn it well, honey.